Well, hello there. Welcome to another edition of Paul the Guzman Presents Art. So, about a few, about a few days ago, I was in uh, visiting Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, and over there, I was actually doing some performance work that I was doing in the uh, Chinatown area, and I also did a lecture at the University of Victoria. And because of those two events. I was able to get some new subscribers to my channel, so thank you very much to those new subscribers. And if you're new to this channel, I just want to mention that this channel is about contemporary art. So you are now warned, and you can run away if you want to, but um, if you stick around, I'd really appreciate it because it's really quite interesting what I try and what I try and sort of do with the contemporary art here in Vancouver and also elsewhere as I travel around. So we are actually in the East Vancouver area near the Pink Pearl restaurant, which is quite a fine little restaurant over in Vancouver. And we are going to go inside a gallery uh, called the Will Abelia Art Projects, just over there. Let's have a look at the uh, logo there. And inside the Will Abelia Art Projects, which is located at 1129 East Hastings Street, we are going to look at the work of Liz Lemieux, who is an artist based here in Vancouver, but she was born, I think she was born in Quebec, probably in Montreal. And um, we're just looking at a, um, at a uh, text-based work here. Like her work is not text-based, her work is really more about painting and figuration and abstraction. But this text piece work is actually quite significant because the title of the show is called Amstram Graham which is kind of like when I was reading the press release, it was uh, something to do with a, um, with, a, with a French childhood sort of poetry that kind of like just repeats itself. But before we go inside the gallery, what I want to do is I want to take a moment to mention that we are on the unceded territories and the ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, also known as the city of Vancouver. So, I usually have a bunch of notes that I have here, so I'm just going to go and have a look at them as, as we go through. And we're just going to go inside and have a look. So, Willow Bell Yard Projects, 1129 East Hastings Street, open Tuesday to Saturday from 12 to 5. I'm going to be posting a lot of that information in the description area. So... We're going to go and have a look at the show right now. We're just going to do a pan. Actually, let me center that one there. So there was this really interesting sort of press release that was uh, written by Kathleen Ritter about the show. I'm going to try and see if I can put as much of it in the uh, description area because Unfortunately, in YouTube, you can only put in as much as 5,000 characters. I think this one goes beyond 5,000 characters. But the show is on till about mid-October. I'm going to put all of the relevant information down in the description area so you have a chance to actually go and see it. So the first thing we should actually try and say is that this show is comprised of two separate series of works. There's the um, Amstram Graham works and there's the Zeitenwender works. And when you look at the works right now, the, the more sort of like um, concentrated, minimal palette works are the uh, Amstram Graham works. Like these works are Amstram Graham. And I think maybe what we'll do is we'll just go and have a look and look at these, um, these works. Because the first thing that came to my mind when I'm looking at these, when I first saw them, I was actually just peering through the window. And I was looking at these particular pieces here that we're seeing right now. And the first thing that came to mind was con the aspects of constellation. And then as I look closely, these are also comprised of many dots. 
which kind of like is a bit reminiscent of Aboriginal paintings, you know, the uh, First Nations peoples of Australia, when they're looking at their designs, they're kind of like looking at it, uh, usually putting them in canvas or even applying them onto cloth. And it's a technique that is kind of like similar to batik, actually, because when you're actually dealing with batik, you're basically looking at um, molten wax with pigment, and then you use a very special, um, you use a very special instrument that has a little well that sort of disperses the um, the ink onto the uh, the fabric. So there's this sort of like sense of, for me anyways, because I am an artist from the global south. That's the first thing that I kind of like see, and of course when you're sort of like looking at it from more like a European Western perspective, there's different things about it that you can sort of like discern from these works. There's a sense of like flow, continuity, like I said before, like a constellation. And these pieces from the Amsterdam Graham works seem to be kind of like, there's an economy with regards to the color palette. There's a certain concentration of depth of color and just a sort of like, uh, it's, it's simple because it seems to be meditative in a way when you're looking at all of these works. Apparently the artist would kind of like just hum these, this, this um, bit of poetry as she goes along because it's like it goes to Amstram, Graham, uh, pick a pick a Colorgram, something like that. I'm gonna have the lyrics of the um, of the of the poem in the um, description area. It's not meant to actually make sense. It's only meant to sort of perhaps give a certain rhythm. More like a I guess a metronome for a when you're looking at it in terms of if you're a musician and you're trying to sort of like get a sort of certain cadence for when you're actually playing the piano or something like that. Even the colors that are being used, specifically these two colors, you know, that sort of like indigo blue type of color that we're seeing here. And the sort of like the brownish color still tends to kind of remind me of so that, um, the Aboriginal colors and the Batik colors that I, that I mentioned earlier. Now it's kind of interesting too that um, this show is comprised of two series of work and the other series of work is called, I'm just going to focus on one of the works here in the very front of the room. And this is the Zeitenwende series of works, which is also kind of influenced by the Amstram Graham sort of uh, childhood poetry sort of rhyming. But these works are more political because when you read the uh, press release, the artist was actually also simultaneously listening to certain uh, political news, um, especially pertaining to Germany and uh, Olaf Scholz. I guess their government has um, decided to militarize Germany now. I, pr I guess because of all the political situations that are happening with Russia, with the invasion of the U Ukraine, with the responsibilities of NATO, perhaps that's one of the things that I Kind of like influences more like this type of work because there's a lot of kind of sense of the concentration of the Amsterdam Graham works, but there's also these, I guess, almost biological globular type of images that you can see here. One thing that I should mention about Liz's work is that she's an artist who is pretty much deals with the language of figuration and abstraction and also dealing with a sense of the body because a lot of the work that she does 
have this sort of like a reference to the bottle. I was actually just reading a brochure about one of the public artworks that she did down in the um, downtown Vancouver area. And it pretty much is a public artwork that references the body, the figure, also sort of like um, perhaps personal narratives that those people might represent. Even though the people are not identified, there, was, there is some sort of like sense of a generic personality that's actually being sort of addressed, you know. Perhaps in a sense, one way of actually dealing with humanity is through, it's, it's through the object's relationship to the body. And when you look at these works, they're almost like these pieces that you can actually wear, you know. Um, of course, these are worked on, on the wall, so you're not going to wear them. But um, there's also this sense of 19th century pattern and decoration, specifically the William Morris era, which I tend to find very, very seductive. That's the thing about the work that she produces, is that when I've seen some of the older works, or works previous to this, it's really, materially speaking anyways, dealing with a lot of um, cut fabric in abstract forms that she arranges in her, in her canvases. And so there's this sort of sense of tactility, there's a sense of relationship to the body, and that's probably one of the things that I really enjoy about the work that she does. So let's have a look and see which one is my favorite here. I'm going to go and have a look at this one. So if you lasted this long, you obviously like the video, so you must click like a thumbs up button. Also, if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing to the channel, that'd be great. It would be terrific to actually have you as part of my engagement, as part of my audience. And I post every week, usually later in the week. And um, so let's see now. Just want to reiterate that a lot of the information will be in the description area, including uh, the times that the gallery is open, its location, the press release, uh, website links and on that note thank you very much for tuning in and i hope you have a great day and i am out of here bye